In school, there are generally three kinds of writing assignments you might face. The informative essay, the argumentative essay, and the analytic essay. In this video, we're going to just look at the differences between the three and some of what the expectations are for each of those so that you go into writing them in the proper headspace. Sometimes it gets a bit confusing. That's of interest. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so three kinds of writing assignments, the informative essay, the analysis, and the argumentative essay. Now the informative essay is all about how you treat the subject. It's about passing information along. It's not really about the subject itself. You could pick trees, you could pick giraffes, you could pick piano, you could pick the 1950s. It's not really about the subject. It's about how you treat the subject in your writing. Because the informative essay is all about teaching, that's what your professor is going to be looking for. They're going to be looking for logical, clear arguments, a paper that's very systematic and orderly, everything is in its place and makes sense. Each argument or each um, bit of information follows a logical path. You have a very clear thesis and your explanatory strategies are effective you're really explaining things lucidly and well. When you write the informative essay, remember that you're focused on information. This is not about how you feel about it. It's not about your emotion. You are simply informing someone. So keep emotion more or less out of it and stick to facts. That means you're not arguing, you're not really interpreting, you're not really reflecting. You are passing along information. Now that can include personal experience papers, but the difference is the reason a personal experience can fall into that, even though you would say to yourself, well, that's absolutely got emotion behind it, is that if you are recounting an experience, that's a kind of information, that you're informing me of your experience. You're not necessarily analyzing it, you're not making an argument, you're just letting me know what happened. So examples of this would be, a paper about how something works, cause and effect paper, personal experience, any sort of descriptive paper. The interpretive essay. So while the informative essay is all about passing information along, the interpretive essay is about sort of analyzing it and assessing that information. It's about learning to understand something and assess its importance. Interpretive, again, it's all about your interpretation, which means that you are examining why you feel about something the way that you do. You're examining your reactions and then saying, why do I feel that way? This essay is all about your interpretation. So it's, you don't want to just say, this is what I think. I don't like prunes. A really interesting example there. You want to say, well, why don't I like that? You know, I don't like that fashion style. Why? So it's not just saying what you don't like. It's reflecting on why it is you don't like it or why you do like it or why you think something's important or why you don't. When we first encounter something, anything, a piece of information, an experience, something we see, we tend to have this jumble of feelings and emotions about it. We might like it, we, we might dislike something about it, or we might not be sure of something. We're just first experiencing it. So what a professor is looking for here is that you're able to sit with all your thoughts about something and then break it down into logical pieces and really say, really articulate what's going on in your head. It, it takes time to do that, to sit there and say, what do I think and why do I think it? If you're arguing a paper about a political policy and you feel a certain way about it, the interpretive essay is going to say, I believe that the government should X, Y, Z, and here's why. I believe that. I'm interpreting what I think. Why do I think that? This could also be if you're reading a piece of literature, right? You're reading a piece of literature, you're going to interpret that. You're going to say, I think Alice in Wonderland is a very interesting example of 19th century X, Y, Z. Or I, I think that this film is a propaganda piece because of this and this and this. Like, there are millions of interpretations to everything. My interpretation is totally going to be different than yours because my perspective is different than yours. So to that end, it's important that you realize an interpretive essay is not about finding the answer. You don't have to have the answer. You have to have 
your answer and you have to try to persuade me of it and convince me that it's at least logical, even if I disagree with it. This is what I think and this is why I think it. So your task, if you're assigned a paper like this, is to figure out what is what I believe, what do I believe, and how do I convey that in a persuasive, logical way? Very, very often, interpretive essays are ones in which you are examining other documents, other events, other artifacts, and you're reflecting on them. If you're in history class, very often you might be assigned an interpretive essay on a certain period. Same goes for uh, literary classes, loads of times. Um, the humanities courses are going to be something like that. In a science course, how do you interpret that data? Right? You've been given, you've done research, you've done all this data, well how do you interpret that? What does it mean to you? That's interpretive essay. Finally, the argument. The argumentative essay. Now this doesn't mean an angry kind of argument, it just means that you're making the case for something. This can be a little bit confusing for people in terms of, well how is that different than the interpretive essay? Isn't the interpretive essay saying my opinion and making a case for it? And yes, in fact, it is. The difference is that the interpretive essay is a bit more about trying to understand our perspective and trying to understand an entity and ask why is that important? Why does it matter? The argument is more about a hardline opinion that you're going to back up with persuasive data or arguments that go along and really try to make your point. Having said that, remember that the goal is not to win. An argument is about taking part in a dialogue. If we both go to the cinema and you say, I love that movie, and I say, I did not like that movie, then we're going to be in a dialogue about that. You're going to say why you loved it, I'm going to say why I didn't. The same is true of your argumentative essays. Some people will have said one thing about Hamlet, or some people will have said one thing about that research that you did, and you might say something very, very different. So you're going to make your case, but you want to make your case in light of other people's comments. So don't write your paper in a vacuum. If you just write a paper that says, I absolutely don't think Hamlet is about a man who couldn't make up his mind. If I don't know anything about Hamlet and I read that, I'm gonna be like, well, okay, that's fine. But if I say in my argument paper, many people say that Hamlet is all about a man who couldn't make up his mind. I, however, disagree. You've just situated yourself in the conversation, you've given legitimacy and a reason for the writing that you're doing, and now you're setting us off on the path that is your essay. This is definitely the paper in which your professors will really be looking at your persuasive skills. They'll be looking for a very rational argument. They'll be saying, how did they utilize logos, pathos, ethos? How did they structure this? Does this make sense? Within the umbrella that is the argument paper, there are several sort of subcategories that rather fit into this, which would include critiques, reviews, and proposals. This is where you would do a business proposal. Business proposal would fall into the argument category because you are proposing a solution. Even if maybe it's your product, you're proposing a solution. So let's, let's look at the differences of those. A critique asks, what is true? A critique is going to summarize a person's perspective and then defend it or disagree with it. This is different than a review. A review asks, what is good? You might be evaluating an event, an artifact, a practice, an institution, a film, etc. And a critique very often begins with a gut reaction. I liked that. I didn't like that. But you must transfer that into something more judicious. A judge hears evidence and then makes a call based on that evidence. A judge thinks through arguments in light of legal principles, not just in light of, oh, here's all this evidence, right? Lots of evidence, and do I agree with it or not? No, no, a judge says, here are the legal principles, let me listen to the evidence and make a call on them based on the legal principles. The same is true of critiques. You have a set of certain, very often codified or understood principles, a film, right? If you're going to review a review, I said critique, I meant review, you're going to review a film, there are certain things that people will say that's what makes a good film. And so when you review that film, you're going to do so in light of that information, just the way the judge would review a case in light of legal principles. 
So reviews are not just what you liked and didn't like and why, they are in the context of a dialogue and of terminology and a conversation that's happening about what it actually means to be a good film. Again, a review, what is good? And again, just to compare this to say a critique, a critique is what is true. So if you made an argument about the institution of education and how fourth graders receive their textbooks or something like that, and you don't like that, that's not necessarily an argument of what is good. That's a critique of their ideology. That's a critique of their idea. That is saying, well, what's really true? What do we really need to be doing here? That's different than saying, is this a good, worthy piece of art, literature, etc. Finally, proposals. Proposals ask, what can change? What should be done? What do we do? The other two don't necessarily say, what should we do? A proposal is all about inciting action. It says, here's what we should do and why. So there you have it, just a quick summary of the essays that are informative, interpretive and argument based. I will be doing more videos specifically on each of these. And um, at the time that I'm filming this, I don't have those videos yet, but hopefully when I do, I will go back and add them in the comments below. So you might look there. Otherwise, um, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This channel is all about communications, not just academic, but business as well. Not just written, but speech as well. So if you're interested in videos that just helps you learn to be a better communicator, then you might want to subscribe. If you have any questions or are confused about this, please leave those in the comments below. If you have bits of advice on any of these, I would love to know what those are as well. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.